and today we're going to look at hooking up one of these uh, Core LCD screens to a Nord MCU eight, uh, ESP8266 based uh, microprocessor. We've done this on the Arduino already, so let's get started. <laughs> Hi and welcome to Astronical. So we're going to hook up one of these little colour LCD screens. This one's a 128 by 128 pixel screen uh, using a 7735 driver. Now I've covered this before, hooking, one, hooking this particular one up to an Arduino. Uh, I put a little uh, card in the corner and you can have a look at that if you want to. Uh, and then the next thing was to actually hook it up to this screen, to sorry, to this microcontroller, which I figured should be fairly easy task. I mean, he's got an SBI interface. It proved not to be but for reasons I didn't quite um, appreciate at the time I, and to expect this to be what the problem was. Um, but we'll move into it. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to wire it up. So in the top corner, if there's room, when I actually edit this, I'll put the connections on a little table, if there's room. Um, but for now, we need to connect up. So um, the five volts, so if we're looking down, we've got um, five volts at the top here and going down to some pins at the bottom. Um, I should take this off actually just briefly to show you. I can get it off. There we go. So yeah, we've got five volts ground, some uh, LED, to, which is just a backlight, and then the SPI, communication clock and data. Um, register select, which is sometimes called, uh, or I think Adafruit call it DC or something like that. Um, which may stand for data control, I'm not sure. Uh, reset for the screen and chip select. So when this is low, um, then this chip will look at whatever's on the SPI bus and interpret that as data for itself. So let's just plug that back in. And so we've got, at the top, we've got the plus volts. Now, I'll tell you exactly now what the problem was actually with the screen. So I use this on my Arduino before and I'll just move the microphone make sure that's picking up okay so I used my Arduino before and you can see this is 5 volts and you know on various catches down here and on this side turn it around you can see that it's got um, 3.3 volts so yeah I figured when I bought it it had this header was already pre-soldered didn't have a header here so I could have took my Arduino to this and yeah, there was a few issues in finding out what connections actually worked best and it, because it was very confusing with these actual labelling, but we got there and I, I got that working. And then so I soldered up this header and believe me, it was slightly more neat, neater than what it is now at the end. Um, I soldered up the header on it, I thought great, and I connected up this to this board as I thought it should be. Um, as the Arduino kind of went, but using the 3.3 volts and everything else going to the board, and it didn't work. And it didn't work for some time. I spent a few hours working through this as to why it wouldn't work. First of all, researching the internet, everything seemed to be fine, although there were some conflicting pages about what you connect up. Um, did that, I even got the scope out and actually probed the SPI connections, making sure they were um, sending the right sort of data, what was would be expected. Everything seemed fine. In the end, I became exasperated, figured out that uh, maybe I brought the board in some way, um, maybe with the solder or whatever. I actually did re-solder it, so it's all a bit globby now. I went over putting more and more solder on, uh, just making sure everything, everything was connected up okay. Still wouldn't work. Um, connected it, and then I just, as a last minute ditch, Effort. I just actually just connected it up to the to the five volts, three volts, three to the five volts. Everything went on here, on this header, and it worked straight away, straight away. Um, so I'm not sure whether um, I don't think the soldering was wrong at the, at the time. I'm not convinced that this header, because it didn't have a header on it, I'm not convinced this was actually connected up properly to the chip. And I'm just running it through this on a you know for Arduino. 
or this one which runs on 3.3 volts just running it on here and it was fine so if it had done that in the first place it would have took literally minutes to have this screen working however so I'll plug it back in and we'll wire it up now so uh, that's in so um, so yeah I'm going to connect up the uh, VCC pause the fire bolts on there too and the fire bolts on here uh, which can get in various places I'll just get the magnifying glass because my eyes aren't brilliant one second and yes there's one right down at the bottom here um, but I'm not going to take that there's one over here as well so I'm going to plug it in there just double check yep yeah, three volts and then we've got a ground we've got to do as well which is the next connection uh, don't appear to have a black wire we've got a dark blue wire here so we'll get that into the ground which is just there yep and then coming down uh, we've got the LED now let me just check um, if you come to my screen here you can see what I'm, I'm looking at um, I've got um, if you go to X if you go to the Extronical website here I wrote an article already about connecting this screen to here briefly talk about the problems I had uh, but I'm just looking at this connection table here which is what if I've had room to put on the screen I will have done um, but I also just need to actually um, open up this so I can actually see what I'm connecting to you can see I'm going down here so I just need to have that on screen for myself while I'm actually connecting up at the same time so I need to connect up the LED let's just scroll down to those connections the LED which is going to go to the uh, positive connection as well and the LED is um, one two three four five the sixth pin down on there okay so LED will make sort of reddish make it orange so just count down so one two three four five six that's going to be the LED connecting to plus volts as well and then we need to connect up the uh, clock which is straight after the LED and the colours aren't really that important um, well they're not important at all um, putting the green and now coming back to my screen actually on the computer when I was looking up the connections for the um, Nord MCU basically I just typed in um, Nord MCU pinout and you get lots of diagrams I use this one you can see that there are um, uh, an SPI interface there there's also one over on that side and if you look as H in front of that which stands for hardware uh, SPI this one um, is I think software based but either way this one is pretty much used exclusively for flashing um, the bootloader I think it is on this actual board it's certainly used for doing the flashing uh, you do not use that you use this one over here so you can see I'm going to connect uh, the clock up to D5 so the clock was just after the LED and it's going to go to D5 is that D5 uh, just let me check with my magnifying glass yes it is and then the next one down is actual uh, data so this is the equivalent of uh, MOSI, MOSI, however you want to pronounce it, MOSI, Master Eight Slave In, and that goes to D7. And the next one will be Register Select, or as Adafruit sometimes call it, DC in their code. And that is literally the next one down, so it's, it's, great. it's a little bit easier. And I'm going to connect that up to, where I said I'm connecting up to, right, Register Select is going to D4 which is up here and then we've got uh, the reset for the screen which you could get to the reset line of the uh, board as well you don't need to so I'll reset the screen going to D3 and then last is chip select which when it goes low um, means that this uh, will respond to all the information on the um, SBI bus um, so if you've only got one SBI device in your system you could tie it permanently low and it would work fine uh, I always kept it up like this I don't tie it permanently low um, so that's going to D2 
Okay. Now, when I power it up, the uh, sample cord is still in there, so we'll see whether I've actually wired it right. And I'll actually show you how to, uh, you know, where the cord is and how to install the drivers for it. So let's just pop it on, make sure it's all still working. And yes, it is. So you can see uh, the demo's going around. It's very similar to the demo I did for the um, Arduino. And it's got this slightly altered drive that I wrote for the Arduino because we had the same issues here of things being clipped off. So it's got the driver I, I altered, sorry, slightly. Uh, and then it goes around the same demo but rotates it 90 degrees and it'll go upside down, it'll go onto that side coming down here. Uh, the only thing that didn't work, and I'm not looking into it yet, there was a part, as part of this demo that Adafruit wrote for, for these various uh, graphical effects, uh, was a line drawing demo. For whatever reason, at the end of the line drawing demo, it looks like it's when it's coming back out of the function it seems to reset the um, node MCU um, when it would start again. I'm not quite sure why. And as for the um, my next project I want to use uh, these two together with, we'll be using that, we'll be using in line drawing, it will all be sort of bitmap graphics then. I'm really not bothered, so I wasn't gonna spend any time investigating why that particular piece of code uh, was having a strange effect on this board stroke screen combination. Okay. So let's move over to um, actually setting up yours so you can actually get this to work on your screen. Okay, so first thing you really want to do is to install the actual driver code. Now, I've already installed it, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually delete it. So if you've already installed the driver code for the Arduino, I have updated it slightly. Um, so we've got a demo for the Arduino and a demo for, this, for the Node MCU within the driver code that I wrote. So if you didn't install the previous driver code, then you'll need to remove it uh, manually, unfortunately, because if you try and add the new one on, it'll just say that the, the, the library already exists and it won't do anything with it. Because the, the library is updated, so it has a, an example for use with the Arduino, an example for use with um, the Node MCU. So to get to your libraries folder to delete um, the SS3, the 7735 um, driver code that I wrote, you will need to possibly if you want to find it where it is if you don't know it's where your Arduino sketches are stored but if you go to preferences it tells you where your sketchbook location is there I'm going to just go copy that out let's go cancel close that bring up the window you can paste it in there press return and that's where all the various projects are stored if you look in here there should be one called a folder called libraries where is it there is a there it is libraries Okay, open up that and I'm going to delete the Extronical ST7735 library there because I'm going to replace it. So I'm going to say click yes, I'm going to delete that and I'll show you how you need to actually download it from. So go to the web and go to www.extronical.com and if you go to basics, displays and then the TFT LCD that we're using, go across for the Node MCU, click there. And then scroll down until you see. There we go. The Extronical ST7735 library is there. You'll need to install that. If you've not installed the Adafruit Graphics Library before, you'll need that. If you have, you don't need that again. You can get it there if you just click there, take it to their GitHub page. <clears throat> this one will download straight from my website. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to download it. And then I'm going to go to the Arduino IDE. And I'm going to say include a library, I'm going to add a zip library, and it's in downloads. Okay, on. And double click that. And that should be installed. Library has been added, it says. So I'll go to file, examples. Now this may go off the bottom of your viewable screen. And just scroll down to my libraries. Now if it's at the bottom, yeah, it's just off the bottom of, of the area of screen I'm recording. But if you carry on going down, you come to something that says Extronical ST7735 Library. Go into there, you have a, a sketch called Graphics Test, that's for the Arduino. You'll have one called it says Graphics Test Node MCU. That's obviously for the Node MCU we're using here. So there we go. That's the code. Should all be set up and working with the wiring you've got. Um, so we'll just compile it and upload it again. So you'll see the screen stop. In fact, we should really upload. Um, I'm going to click now. I'm going to upload an empty sketch just to clear off the program that's on there. And you can see it's actually doing it for real. 
And also, if you've not set up uh, an ODMCU, uh, put a card in the corner, you can look at the guide for that. Or, and, and or go to extraanchor.com, which has the guide on there as well. Okay, we're uploading. You can see the screen stop updating. And there we go. So yeah, blank screen. That's just the LED black light that's on. Uh, nothing else happening. So let's go back and just close that down. And now we'll upload the main code. So it's basically based on Adafruit's as their header at the top here. Adafruit's uh, graphics demo with the lines taken out. As I said, for whatever reason, it uh, crashes or resets the Node MCU. And I'm certainly not going to spend time trying to work that out because I know for a fact um, for my next project, which I want to move on to, and that will take quite a few weeks. Uh, I do will not be using lines. I'm using Bitmap graphics, so I'm not going to spend any sort of time at the moment looking into why that is. So I've just removed the line demo. So let's upload that, and it's uploading. So in a few seconds, we should see uh, what's it up to? It's not even got to thirty odd percent yet. And um, we should see this screen start and come to life. Nearly there. Okay, a bit of a reboot. And off it goes. So that's all for this episode. Um, I will be working on um, an episode where we look at uh, how fast we can actually get data onto the screen. Because if we can't get it onto the screen fast enough, then the game may well not progress much further. But I'm confident that we can using some uh, techniques using modern gaming and. Um, back in the day gaming as well to actually get uh, a flick of free uh, experience on that screen um, that's all for now like subscribe and share and I'll see you next time